Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we also open old school magic. Look at it. This, this looks very professional. Look at it. Look at it. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna to save this for last. It's a very professional looking package. And I actually have a lot of... Look at this. I got a lot of posts. That's because I'm working on several projects. And maybe this one's actually quite nice to, to open first. Um, this is mail from David. Uh, David Groen. So thank you for sending it to me. And I believe these are just basic lens. And um, yeah, let me get the lighting a little bit better. And if you... Look at the quality of the basic lens. They should be, they're all revised and they should be pretty beat up. And you might wonder why would you want to have beat up? Um, actually, this one is still pretty decent. Here you can see there's some quality things. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a nice chewed up corner. You might wonder why would you want um, beat up? Oh, the camera is a bit shaky today. Why would you want beat up revised lens what's well, actually um i'm going to put uh going to play a couple of unsleeve revised matches look at this nice a hole in the card that is pretty good so what i want to do is i just i want beat up basic lens to just play in this sleeveless uh revised league so that i don't damage actually quality basic lens i couldn't do that you know so i kind of asked around i said you know who has got some cheap beat up, you know, plate or heavy plate, basic lens. And uh, yeah, this is nice. Some people sent me some lens, which is quite cool. Maybe this one has them as well. Kind of feels thick though, but maybe. So really nicely packed. Let's open it up. Yeah, look at this. This is properly beat up. <laughs> Oh, this is what I'm looking for. Not sure who sent this to me. Maybe Tim did. If you're watching Tim, thank you very much for sending these out to me. So this is exactly what I've been looking for. Just really like beat up lands that I can play in my unsleeved revised decks. And a video actually will come uh, to the channel shortly. So I'm not sure when I'm going to post this specific mail day. But um, the chances are that um, pretty quickly after posting this, you will also see a video of me playing some sleeveless revised cards. And I just want to say up front, don't worry. All the revised cards will be, you know, at least in play condition. Um, so they're, they're really like, they're, they're cards that, you know, you can play sleeveless. Anyway, so here we go. And remember, I mean... People used to play sleeveless, right? That was the way it used to be. There were no sleeves, even if you wanted to. And then you got the penny sleeves and all that. But okay, let's not talk about the whole history of sleeves. Maybe that maybe that would be an interesting um, video. I'm sure somebody made a video about that. I mean, YouTube is just full of all those details. So this is actually um, a package from, uh, from Ron. He's also an old school magic player from the Netherlands. And he's better known as the Upton Troll. And he's sending me, I think, something really special. Um, so he's known as the Upton Troll. You can actually find him uh, on Instagram. He's got a pretty nice Instagram account. So if you're interested in old school, uh, he might be worth a follow. Look at this. There we go. I think this is, yeah. So this is what he puts with all the cards that he sends. It's really nice. And he's just giving this to me. Um, for me to give away. So I'm not going to keep what's inside. You're probably thinking, oh, he's doing so, he's so mysterious. Um, but as you know, I like to organize things for my patrons. And as part of a new tournament that I'm organizing at the moment for my patrons, I want to give something away. And the way that I do things is I usually give something to the winner, but I also want to give prices to, and as you can see, it's a booster pack. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to show you what booster is, but I'm not going to open the pack because this will be something that I'm going to give away in one of the tournaments that we're doing. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm not sure who is going to get it. Maybe, maybe the person that has the most original deck or the most creative play. Not sure yet, but wow, look at this. I just want, Ron, I really, really want to thank you that you're donating this pack into the prize pool of our event. So this is a Homelands booster. 
Uh, only eight cards in this, just like the uh, Fallen Empire booster packs. So it's very thin. And uh, yeah, it's just a very interesting booster. It's a little bit beat up around the side. But I'm not complaining. I'm just really happy that you're donating this. Let's um, let's take a look. What does it say? Published by Wizards of the Coast. And I think usually under the flap here, you got some uh, lore information. Here we go. Hidden away by mysteries. Oh, by, by a mysterious wizard. Okay, for generation, the forgotten world of homelands awaits discovery. Revealed within are many people and cultures and creatures in a realm of complex alliances and sinister plots. What secrets will you uncover as you venture into homelands? Ooh, spooky. Um, if you haven't seen the promo clip that was made for homelands back in the day, this was... 1995 or 94? It's probably on the pack somewhere, isn't it? Uh, let's see if it's somewhere on the pack. Should be right. There should be a date somewhere. Oh, yeah, here, 1995. Here we go. Sorry, I was kind of like focusing on. There you see. So this is 1995. So the clip they made in 1995, actually Timmy has a really big role in that clip and I can really advise you to watch it. I'll put a link in the description below. So if you want to see that, it's it's hilarious. It's hilarious. So um, we've got a pack of Homelands that unfortunately I'm not going to open. Sorry, everybody, but I want to keep this one for the price pool. And we've got a lot of basic lands. Right, so I'm really looking forward to start brewing using these for my unsleeved decks. And then we've got our big pack. And our big pack here comes from Goat Enterprise, and that's actually um, an account on Card Market. So it's a Dutchman. I think most Dutch old school players know him. His name is Rudy. And um, he once sent me uh, a whole stag of Timmy's, which I really, really appreciate. So I'm always happy to, you know, buy from him or just trade with him. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a good seller. He's a good seller. And here are the cards. So, you know, sent really, really neatly. I think I know what's in here because um, I've been working a little bit on my The Dark collection. I noticed after um, the Dark tournament that I organized that I actually have a lot of The Dark cards and only need a few more. So I decided to... Get a couple of the dark cards. Unfortunately, like so many things right now in old school, some of those cards, they have spiked so much. And I personally think they're too expensive. So I decided not to get those. But I was able to get a few of the cards that I still needed. And also a few of the cards that I think are just, you know, interesting to, to brew with and to kind of explore. So let's open it up here. There we go. So as you can see, I bought quite a lot this time around um, okay so here we see again some new cards just for filling oh there we go I thought maybe this was filling too but it's not necropolis five to cast for an artifact creature from the dark counts as a wall it's an o1 wall and then it's got this weird old school ability you can pay zero take a creature in your graveyard and remove it from the game put X Plus all plus one counters on Necropolis, where X is the removed creature's casting cost. Now, what a good card would this be if you could also use it on the graveyard of your opponent? And I'm more saying that uh, in the sense of, you know, the current um, era of magic. So it wouldn't be very, very good um, in old school if it could do that. It would be a little bit more useful, I guess. Um, the art by Nene Thomas, she also did Hercules Recall, for example. And uh, beautiful, beautiful art. I think the art alone is worth to, to get this card. And then, oh yeah, we've got an Orc General. One red and two to cast for a Summon General. It's so funny. I mean, of course it's an Orc now, but all those creature types back in the day. Tap and sacrifice one Orc or Goblin to give all Orcs plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Actually, a pretty strong card, if you think. Well, not strong, but I mean, sack one creature to to potentially give all your creatures in, on the field plus one, plus one. Unfortunately, you got to tap it, right? What if you just could just sack a goblin, give all the orcs plus one, plus one without having that tap? So you could do it multiple times, maybe add goblin warrants in the mix. 
it would be quite interesting, but that's not the case. So, and then we have Deep Water, which I think is really cool art, but the card is just not that useful. Two blue to cast for an enchantment. If you pay one blue, all mana producing lands you control provide blue instead of their normal mana until end of turn. So this could kind of be interesting if you want to keep one blue open to counter, right? You can just pay that one blue and all your lands can produce blue so it's easier for you to counter. One of the main problems I have with this card is that it's two blue to cast. If it would just be one blue and one to cast or just one blue to cast, then at least it would be interesting if you're splashing double blue or something. But the way the card is right now, it's pretty useless. I do like the art of the sharks, the hammerhead shark here at the front. And also kind of a Viking ship at the back, it seems. And that's quite a, kind of interesting because it's not made by Tom Weinerstrand. And usually when there's a ship in, Tom is close by, but not in this particular case. So that's a nice exception, deep water here. Then we've got Inquisition. One black and two for a sorcery. Look at target player's hand. Inquisition does one damage to target player for each white card in his or her graveyard. So Inquisition. So these are all cards and then a filler card. These are all cards that I didn't have yet. And then we've got two cards which are kind of in a sleeve here. So I guess they're important. We'll keep them for last. Here we see another one that's in the sleeve. Ooh, two more that are in sleeves. Okay, uh, this can, can go away and yeah, this one can go away. Let's turn around. Oh, Nameless Race. One black and three. Summon Nameless Race. Trample, star, star. And this is just one of these weird old school cards, right? Pay X life when bringing Nameless Race into play. Effects that prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter this loss of life. When Nameless Race is brought into play, X, or actually it's an asterisk, right? May not be greater than the total number of white cards all opponents have in play and in their graveyards. Yeah, yeah. I guess in some weird situations this card could be useful. And I mean, I do like the whole vibe of the card and just the fact that it's so weird, but um, yeah, yeah, I don't really see my see a deck where I can play it. Maybe with Heaven's Gate in a white and black deck, that would be kind of funny. Maybe Heaven's Gate, combine it with Underworld Dreams, combine it with, um, what's that card that, that all the white uh, creatures are, are they then destroyed or removed? I can't remember. Anyway. Maybe that's some kind of weird synergy combo that, that you can pull off with this. But yeah, it's going to be tough to use this one. Um, and then, oh, this is such a nice card. Look at the art. So cool. Christopher Rush, isn't it? Yeah. A 2-2 two -two for three green. I love, the, I love when it's really like color strong. And the art is so nice. Like the color of this flower and just this face. Just take a moment to look at the art. This is really cool. Summon Niall Sylvain. Four green and tap and target creature regenerates. So potentially it's a really good card. Potentially. But you got to have a lot of green mana. You got to go all into green with this one. And Rackman. Rackman is pretty cool. I actually played against Rackman not too long ago in the Dark Tournament. I think it was Rob, if you're watching this. I think you were playing it. And I really respected that because... You had a really strong deck and you played Rackman in it. And I think that's just really cool. So Rackman is two black and two. Uh, summon Rackman, uh, Rackman and three black and tap. It's a two one, by the way. Three black and tap. Look at opponent's hand. If opponent has any creature cards in hand, he or she discards one of them at random. This ability can only be used during the controller's turn. So it, again, this is one of these cards where I feel it would be so much better if it would, for example, say, look at opponent's hand if opponent has any non-land cards, right? And that they then have to discard a card at random from their hands that cannot be a land. Then it would be really powerful. I don't think it would be too powerful because it's still three black, so you really got to commit into the black story. But then it, it would have a place, you know? It, it, it would see some play. But anyway, it's a cool card. It's really, really stunning art. In general, I think the Dark is, again, one of those sets where, you know, the Dark, all the art is different, but they all have that same horror theme, you know? And that's what I like when you have a set 
where artists are giving the freedom to do what they want to do. And at the same time, they connect. It makes sense. You can see it when a card is from the dark, just by looking at the art, even though the artists were not limited in how they wanted to express themselves, which I think is, is really great and kind of shows that if you explain to an artist what the vibe of a set is, you don't have to give a specific color palette or a specific you know, uh, region that you want the cards to look like. You don't have to do all that when you've got um, the right artists with the right instructions. Okay, so we've got the Ragman. And now let's look at all these sleeved cards. So apparently they're worth sleeving. So let's take a look here at the first one. We've got Grave Robbers, talking about beautiful art. This is Quentin Hoover, I believe. Yes, a Quentin Hoover, it's a 1-1 one, one for two black and one. Summon Robbers, black and tap, take one artifact from any graveyard and remove it from the game to gain two life. This is actually pretty useful or can be pretty useful in specific situations. Again, the big difference here is that you can take it from any graveyard. And if we look back at the card we looked at at the start here, that summon wall, unfortunately, it cannot be any graveyard. You know, that would make such a big difference. The nice thing as well is that, um, well, it's any one artifact, so you gotta kind of search. This is a nice card to use against um, uh, the Argivian Archaeologist, which is actually one of my favorite cards, but you can kind of counter the Archaeologist with this card. That would be uh, <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Anyway, uh, Grave Robbers is over here. Uh, and then we have, oh yeah, Boris Devil Boom. Now this card is not from the dark. This is a card from Legends. It's actually a legend himself. One red, a black, and three. And for two, a black and red, you can tap it and you can put a minor demon token into play. Treat this token as a 1-1 one, one red and black creature. This is a 2-2 two, two creature itself. And it looks very, very weak, but I think in the right deck, this can be really, really good. Remember, in old school, being able to make creatures is actually quite strong. This is a great mana sink. Like I've seen people even playing in singleton with the hive where it is actually a pretty good card. And I wanna to try to play this card in um, kind of a Highlander old school deck where I'll play with blue, red, and black, right? Because I've got Tetsuo, uh, and I've got a, I've got a Soul Canard and Swamp King, and now I've got Boris Devil Boom. So I kind of like the idea of having that team together. I, th I think that's pretty cool. So we've got Boris Devil Boom. Really, really happy. Just gonna, gonna put it over there. It's not a card from the dark. And okay, here we've got a card from the dark. Now, this is an interesting card. I've actually seen this in action a few times season of the witch three black to cast so just the same casting cost as underworld dreams it's an enchantment at the end of each player's turn all of his or her untapped creatures that could have attacked but did not or destroyed so that's pretty brutal right if you do not pay two life during your upkeep season of the witch is destroyed effects of prevent or redirect damage may not be used to counter this loss of life so what i kind of like about season of the witch is that um, you know, of course you've got to pay two life during your upkeep, right? So that may sound pretty steep, but when you use this kind of more as a sorcery, you pay it for three black and you're kind of forcing your opponent to do all these attacks that he probably doesn't want to. Remember, this is the same color that gives you Royal Assassin, right? So that can be pretty sweet, that combo alone. And then the next turn, you can choose if you take two damage, you can also choose not to. So I like cards that give you the option. If you don't pay the two life, Nothing happens. All that happens is that Season of the Witch destroys itself. Well, if it's done its purpose, maybe it's the end of the season. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Very cool card, very beautiful art. In case you haven't noticed, you kind of see the skull here in the sky. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a stunning card. Really happy to, to own this one. Um, and there we go, another one, Eater of the Dead. Okay, Eater of the Dead. Again, one of those cards that can do something with graveyards which was really into that whole horror theme of the dark, right? It's just this whole horror set that you're stuck in. And uh, this card actually is not too bad. It may seem a little bit underpowered, but it's actually pretty good. It's one black and four, meaning it's easy to splash. It's a, I think it's a three, four body. Yeah, yeah it's a three, four card. You can pay zero again, take one creature from any graveyard. So for this, you can do any graveyard and remove it from the game. And then you even get a bonus, you get to untap Eater of the Dead. So I would actually be happy if it would just do pay zero, remove a creature from the game. That would be fine for me, you know? Don't underestimate the amount of people that play with Animate Dead 
in the old school format. Don't underestimate the amount of people. Well, not that many people play with Resurrection, but still some people do. So Eater of the Dead is kind of an answer to those kind of uh, shenanigans. So I, I, li I, li I like the idea of when my opponent, when I finally got rid of the trike of my opponent and I'm talking about Triskelion, I can actually remove the Triskelion. And I can of course do that as well with, uh, with Grave Robbers. Let's just put those cards over here, by the way. Uh, okay, so Eater of the Dead, and then we have our last card. Here we go. Boom! Stone Calendar. Yeah, this is a card I've been wanting to have for a while now. Five to cast. It's an artifact. Your spells cost one less to cast. Um, casting cost of spells cannot be go below zero. So that makes sense, right? You cannot say, okay, my spell is not minus one. So you would like get a mana back for Ornithopter. That would be really funny. Anyway, um, I think this card has potential. I've seen it in some Titania song decks where it didn't perform that good, but it's one of those cards that I'd love to think about. I'd love to brew around and um, yeah, maybe I'm just gonna use it. I only have one copy at the moment now. This is my first copy. So I don't really have enough to, to build a deck around it, but maybe I can find a home for it nonetheless. Okay, so let's just kind of look at these beautiful, absolutely stunning cards here. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for uh, sending their cards to me. So thank you to David, to Tim, to Ron, and also to Goat Enterprises here uh, for sending me these cards. And uh, I would also like to thank you, of course, for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that actually very simply. You've already done that by just watching this video. Hopefully you didn't use an ad blocker. I really appreciate it if you don't. Um, and you can also support the channel by simply liking this video. It's quite simple. And also you can subscribe to the channel if you're not a sub yet. Uh, leave a message and let me know what your favorite card is of all these cards from the dark and the single one from Legends. Which one is your favorite? Leaving a comment also helps the channel. Then there's one other way and you can also become a patron, a sponsor of the channel. And when you become a sponsor, there are some nice perks like you can join our Discord. I organize some events every once in a while, not that often, but every once in a while. And on those events, maybe you could win a Homelands booster pack. Yay! <laughs> uh, so yeah, it might, might be worth uh, just taking a look. So if you're interested, there's probably a link popping up right now. You can click on the link and you can check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can find out how you can become a patron. Talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.